The American Eagle Silver Bullion Coin is widely recognized as one of the most beautiful coins ever made. The demand for this unique and exquisite piece is unprecedented, yet little is known about what goes on behind the scenes to produce it. We caught up with the team at the United States Mint at West Point and got quite a lesson in how the American Eagle Silver Bullion Coin is made. Our Silver Bullion program has been doing record numbers. Uh, we started uh, the Bullion program at the Mint in 1986 and we did approximately around 9 to 10 million coins a year. In 2008 we uh, increased production to uh, 20 million and then 2009 we did 30 million and then 2010 we did 35 million. And this year in June we already have completed 22 million coins in this facility for Silver Bullion. We receive our silver blanks in from the vendor. Headquarters does, um, handles the contracts and they order these planchettes or blanks from the vendor. It comes in um, in this form and it has an upset edge and when we receive it we uh, verify that all of the count is correct, that we have all of the blanks and then we send a sample up to the laboratory for the assay. Then these trays come into the press room, they get put into these setup trays where the edges are oiled properly to make sure that they run through the press smoothly so it doesn't get any feeding system faults or jams. Then they get put into the uh, cassettes and the cassettes get fed into the press and the press uh, creates the bullion coin or any other coin that we run automatically. After the uh, coin is struck it is put into those trays and the trays are brought over to the tuber. The tuber will put the coins into the, the plastic tubes and there's 20 in a tube. Now, what we're doing here is that we're ensuring that there truly are 20 pieces in each tube. So this scale is uh, calibrated to uh, show the 20 and then after every tube they hit the print button so that we have the receipt. At the end when we're done with the entire box we put a stamp on there so that they sign to verify that there are indeed 500 coins per box. This is all part of our internal accountability process. We have uh, very stringent controls on our metal to ensure that uh, no piece is unaccounted for. In fact, at the end of every shift, every piece of metal is accounted for, and if it's not, we don't release the employees until it is found. These coins are only sold to approved purchasers, and there's about a dozen of those. And the, the purpose of that, Congress set that up to provide a secondary market for the consumer. We run a three-shift operation five days a week, so we don't stop. In terms of the uh, employees here at this facility, um, they take uh, a lot of pride in the work that they do. Um, they, there's a lot of quality built into um, the process and, and, and the minting process and how they mint coins. Um, they, they are very uh, proud of what they do. Uh, they're dedicated in doing a good job and it's reflective in the uh, coins that are produced at this facility. My name is Jeanette Grogan. I've been here 10 years and I'm the chief assayer at the West Point Mint.
Let me spend a few minutes talking about the great work that Jeanette Grogan's doing up at West Point uh, as the chief chemist. Um, as you know, we produce uh, a lot of uh, silver and gold bullion at West Point every year. And each one of those coins uh, goes through a quality control check uh, that Jeanette's team runs to ensure and guarantee to the American public and the world that uh, the gold is four nines gold and that the silver is three nines silver. An assayer basically is just telling you the composition of the metal. And here we have different purities of metal that we deal with. So it's my job to make sure that when we say a coin is 24 karat gold, that it's 24 karat gold, it's 22 karat gold, it's 22 karat gold, and so forth. It's important because we're actually certifying to the American public that the coins they buy from the government are the purity that we say they are. And we do guarantee the weight of the metal in troy ounces and the alloy composition. Well, the, um, the lab has kind of a two-fold function. We have four chemists up here that are looking at um, the blanks as they come in and we'll verify and pull our samples based on either melts or the ANSI standard. And when the blanks come up here, we start with the whole blanks and we're looking for physical dimensions, weight, um, diameter, hardness, and then we'll go ahead and slice the blanks in half and look at the microstructure, the profile, and then we'll actually take that and roll it flat and sample for alloy composition. And that's done all up here. Once the blanks meet all those parameters, we'll go ahead and release it to production for stamping. And then our second function is we have three quality inspectors down on the production floor, one on each shift, and they're responsible for looking at the first strikes, doing roving inspections, and looking at the last strike coins. They photograph them, and they archive the coins and record all the data in a database. Once we get the first strike, we also get the last piece. And this is the last coin that we get before the dies are retired. So we do have a record of minting from the first strike of the coin all the way to the last, last piece of the coin. We have a metallurgist now that's looking at the microstructure. And we have two new engineers that will help us with our quality and our suppliers. So there's 10 of us all together. We're growing. <laughs> uh, as you visited the lab up there, I'm sure you noticed that it's uh, pretty much a world-class lab, and that's evolved over the years from something that looked like Frankenstein's lab to, uh, you know, the lab that it is today, and we have some terrific people, our assayers, our chemists, our technicians, and our new metallurgists, and uh, we're really pleased. I'm very proud of all of them, and uh, glad to show them off. Thank you.